All right, so the guys are down here at the big three. I just happen to be walking by the oh. mansion and see this thing. Holy crap, that is a sexy <laughs> What do we have going on here, man? Well, we have a lot of stuff going on on this particular uh, Up here is our Arclight XTL 4 and What we've done is taken the standard 4 end, or our, one of our standard Arclight 4 ends, extended it 3 inches farther uh, out in the front of the gun. We have our slot system, which is our Arclight slot system. allows us to mount uh, accessories on it, P-Mag, uh, I'm sorry, polymer, um, uh, mag pole segments, uh, impact weapon components. Um, we even got our pressure button here for our flashlight. Um, the flashlight also is uh, something we're offering now. We've got a tactical light. Yep, you can see you press it and it lights up. And um, allows you to mount it actually in the fore end. So you got this kind of cool space gun thing going on. Yeah, very. Yep. And then also uh, the fore end, in addition to the slot system, what we've also got is CD pockets machined integrally into it. So if you want to get sling farther out, you can get it right up there. Very cool. And I also noticed this mount here. This is not uh, this is not integral to the to, to the Tavor design as well. No, actually the normal Tavor has a uh, top rail that comes along the entire length of the, the gun, but it sits a lot lower. Um, and what we found is the Israelis, their optic rail was designed for their optics. In the U.S., it's pretty much the standard for optic height and um, for iron sight height. So it's actually rail. So the height from the cheek to the eyepiece is the same on an AR. So when you go to shoulder it, your optics, right, yep, it's right there where you can see. Yes. So uh, everybody's shot at me. They said it's so intuitive you don't even notice it it's on there. I will say that it's more intuitive than the standard war position. Uh, the other thing I noticed when I was looking at the front side mount is this is so close to the bore axis uh, and close to the end of the muzzle that you can the back left side the barrel shadow. Actually, um, our light mount, we have a light mount bracket in here that holds the flashlight and it's adjustable. So if you've got a, this is an 18 inch gun, if you've got a 16 and a half, um, you can adjust that light however you want to get it set up if you want. Absolutely. That sounds pretty cool, man. Why don't we go ahead and make this thing hot and see how this thing handles ergonomically. Okay. So we're just going to go from low ready here. Fire. And we go for a little plate. Where's the little plate? So, I uh, really like this idea of having a pressure switch right here on the rail. It's only on the one side. It's not on both sides. I want to be able to rather reflect it and hold it here and use the pressure switch on this side. Right. Well, actually, if you look at the button, there's two bolts here. And actually, what that does is the stock pressure switch off the flashlight is held in place by a plate behind here. And the rubber button and the plate and everything can be moved. So you can actually move this here, on the other side, wherever you want. As long as there's three slots in a row or half, it'll be there as long as there's a pressure switch out in there. That's great. That's great. And for the flashlight, that one inch. I mean, like that's. Any one inch flashlight? Any one inch flashlight. Now, this one is our flashlight. It's called the Mantle Tactical Light Kit. It's actually a CR123 flashlight. Most of the two, this one has the bayonet plug in here. So, using a shorter flashlight that's one cell allows it to actually fit in the system like you see. You know, what everybody wants is the flashlight right there under the, you know, underneath. Wow, that's different. So as I roll up here, this feels kind of different as well, right? Right, and that's actually our, our uh, Tavor curved butt pad. Um, one of the things we found was the length of pull on the gun is a little long for some people, and the existing butt pad's a little curve, uh, angular. It angles down, angles in. Um, it doesn't. It's made for somebody shooting in body armor a lot more or trying to tuck it under the arm. Um, we went with a, a butt pad that by curving it inward and cutting it inward, we were able to shave almost an inch off the length of pull. Um, still keep the overall length of the gun, which is necessary to get out of NFA territory because it's so short to begin with. Um, but then also put some ribbing on it. So that curve really allows you to roll it right up to the shoulder. It's very natural and you can get that same spot every time when you mount the gun. That's excellent. That's great. All right, I'm gonna make it hot now.
That's fantastic. That makes that all the he looks arc light CL4 and Manticore arms. So be looking out for more on the channel, guys. That thing, that thing's pretty badass.